All right, we can call our select board meeting for September 4th, 2019 to order. We're going to kick things off with the tri-board discussion first thing uh, today instead of the consent agenda like we normally do. And since we do have a 6.30 appointment with uh, Mr. Eisenthal and the discuss the ban, uh, upcoming ban with the town treasurer, mm -hmm. I'll kind of let you guys take it. Thank you very much for coming and uh, good to see you. So we have another ban we're signing here and I think we probably have some questions for you in addition to this. Um, but we can kick things off at the ban at least. It says here it's for 1.5 million, but I think it's for slightly less in actuality. I think it was up there because we're renewing a one that's coming due for uh, close to 1.5. Oh, there are a couple of changes. Yes, mm -hmm. we have one that's coming due, but this is also the time where we do a lot of pay down. So about 1.39 or something's coming due. We're paying about $500,000 off uh, and at least this 880. Okay. Um, we, it was. The, the extra one and a half million we were going to take out at this time for the library and because things have been uh, moving along a little slower on um, there's been some delays we decided not to take out that much at this time because we do have the funds that would carry us several more months uh, we'll look at it and consider taking some more money um, in December or January depending on whether we need it in whether we want the borrowing to be in, two, in the calendar year 2019 or 2020. Remember, we're trying to stay under we need that $10 million within a calendar year. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a look and see how things are then and if we need the money. But if we were to add that in now, as we were originally planning, we'd just be spending uh, the interest for another few months. And we're, we're just trying to, to be as uh, careful as we can and not, yeah. not uh, have too much money out at a time. Yeah, we can so avoid some interest can, payments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was. It, it is less at this time than we originally intended. So eight hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred forty-five, and um, we're doing it for a full year. So um, this will go till next September, and then um, we'll see at that time. Uh, we've got some library money in here. We'll take out the larger capital items that would then. Uh, we would then roll over to a, uh, for a short band to take us till January of 21 where we'll be getting out that second bond that will take care of the rest of these projects which probably be about seven and seven and a half million dollars mm -hmm. uh, to finish up our three building projects but for now these uh, can easily stay in here a year and we're glad we did it that way because we got um, a good interest rate mm -hmm. so we went out to bid yesterday and I'll let David explain well, uh, these were done as the typ town has typically done as state house notes uh, certified by the Massachusetts Bureau of Accounts. And um, I don't know, it's possible that the town has received more bids than this in the past, but I can't recall. Uh, the town received nine bids uh, for, the, for this issue. The winning bid was Oppenheimer and Company, which is actually an investment bank. It's not the typical buy and hold institution. Actually, the other eight bidders are all um, banks that would have bought and held the notes. Oppenheimer, in contrast, is actually reoffering the notes to the public. Um, so, um, but they won at a net interest cost of 1.747%, um, coupon rate of 175, and actually a small premium will go into the town treasury. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the uh, rates range from there to 235 uh, among the nine bidders. Um, and, I, and I think the only thing I would add, I think uh, Linda summarized very, this very nicely. I think we would watch the bank qualification, but I think even more importantly, the cash flow for the projects. I think you don't want to get too far ahead of the cash flow because uh, at this point, um, the town. It, the, it, the cost of money is higher than the return on uh, invested money. So why borrow <coughs> much more than you need uh, for an extended period? So, so how does that, how does that differ between the low bidder um, letting it go out to people's shares and, and a bank holding it? So what's the difference with that? Well, it just it just means that Oppenheimer. Uh, it offers its customers and other folks in the market the opportunity to buy small pieces of the note. And actually, that's 
true of the bonds that you uh, executed back in July. Those are in five thousand, ultimately in five thousand dollar denominations as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's under the same. In that way, this note issue ends up being the same as the bond issue. Uh, that it'll be, the note will be held by the depository trust company, which uh, is, used to be in New York. It's actually New Jersey now. But um, they will actually hold the note to the maturity of the note. And the, what they call the beneficial owners, the actual people who bought, you know, pay money to hold the note and then receive the principal and interest at the end, those folks will just get like an electronic statement, and then they can invest as little as five thousand dollars principal for this uh, for, for your notes. Okay. So we do have the forms to sign, and um, I will. If, if there's a the note, uh, which requires at least three of you to sign, and you're all here tonight. We have a clerk certificate, and then we have. Um, Do you um, need a motion from us to accept the? I don't. That's think That's your pleasure. I mean, this is the Department of Revenue does okay. not require uh, the board to take okay. a vote. But I didn't know if you did or not. I think the last time we had to do a vote. Yes, if you do, and okay. this is uh, this is a quirky feature of uh, uh, municipal borrowing. Um, okay. With a select board, the, if you do something with a legal opinion, uh, generally bond council will require the board to take a vote that's in a posted meeting. Uh, the Department of Revenue, I believe, takes the position that the, uh, if the notes are signed, then the board has acted within its authority okay. to do what it needs to do. Okay. Good enough. And just for the viewing public, 1.7. 5% is a lot less than 5%. It, it is. It is. Which is and what we uh, had projected a while back. It's less than the over 2% that we were doing on our bands just a year ago. So, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for changing the, the rating. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It helped. It helped. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 This, this is part of the outcome of that. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's great. So, and this is, uh, yeah, it is, it is very nice that we can yeah, have this good fortune. So I will start it at one end. Each of you is signing, I think, five times. Ready, John? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Oh, yes. It'll be a while. There's something else we can sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a question for you. Uh, since you're here, is uh, there's been some discussion amongst the projects. Um, and I'm going to throw out a hypothetical. Some might relate to this more true in nature than not. But um, say some of our projects have extra money in the budget because they're, the, the cost came in less than expected. And so we have a certain amount. We voted for a town meeting that we're allowed to spend um, on that project. And other projects might be have a tighter budget. Their budget might be a certain amount was voted and they're having trouble meeting that budget based on cost. You can't have my fire substation. <laughs> no. And so <laughs> is, and this is basically a question kind of for the public and so we know, but is there a way to move funds from one approved project to another approved project in order to cover costs on one project that are in excess and another, or would that require going to town meeting, voting, and reallocating those funds or coming up with new funds for a project that might be over budget. OK, so this is, at this point, a hypothetical This is question. hypothetical, let's because, say. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and it is especially, I want to make clear, it's hypothetical because the town has not borrowed, has not used all of the author, you know, the three major authorizations, the fire substation, mm -hmm. senior center, mm -hmm. and library. All of those still have authorization to be used. It's, they haven't used the authorization. So it is theoretical um, at this point. But let's assume that uh, one of the projects, let's assume that all three of the projects end up using all of the local share borrowing authorization. But it ends up that uh, one project um, is struggling to meet the budget, whereas the other might be ending the project with a few extra dollars left in the fund. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be that the general laws do provide for 
the um, uh, transfer of unexpended bond proceeds uh, from one pro from similar pro projects of a similar nature, uh, basically to put it uh, as simply as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, I think you have three projects that are at least you have they're all major building projects, and they are all debt excluded. So I think it would be if t it would be at the pleasure of town meeting. Uh, any excess funds borrowed that are not expended could be transferred to another similar capital purpose. Mm -hmm. But as I said before, it's theoretical, and I, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily advise the town to over borrow in one for one project just simply to uh, uh, cover a theoretical um, shortfall in another project. Mm -hmm. um, the, it might be cleaner, um, at least from a financial point of view, to ask for additional authorization, especially if the, if the shortfall were related to unanticipated conditions, say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that would be, I think that, but that would be another way to approach it. Um, but if the town did end up with unexpended proceeds in one project, I think that then those could be transferred by town meeting to mm -hmm. another capital mm -hmm. project. So in a way, it might be better to just ask for more money for one project if it needed the money, instead of trying to shuffle things around a little Although bit. Although the, the complication there, and I do say, and I did, this is one reason I said unanticipated conditions, because these are all debt excluded projects, um, we would need, we'd need to make sure that the Department of Revenue would approve um, the exclusion of additional authorization uh, from from the proposition two and a half levy limit. So I think that and there's a procedure there in that case to follow. And I, I'm working with a community that's undertaking that right now. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, something called the DE two form uh, can be filed in that case. And actually, all of you would sign something like that if, you, if there was a case to be made, if there was more unanticipated conditions associated with the building project that merited uh, an increase. You'd still need a uh, uh, town meeting to agree to increase the borrowing authorization, but I think you'd want to make sure that the Department of Revenue would agree that the additional borrowing authorization would be uh, excluded under the debt exclusions that were voted by the, uh, by the voters. And could we avoid a ballot vote? Huh? Could we avoid a ballot vote? Well, that's how you would avoid a ballot right. vote, by going to the Department of Revenue and mm -hmm. filing this DE2 form. Yep. So under the current borrowing authorization that town meeting and a ballot vote has granted us, uh, there's not a way to just transfer easily between funds, really, even other, if they're like, like project projects without having to go back to town meeting. Well, the town hasn't borrowed. I mean, if the town had borrowed right. against all of the authorizations and there was money sitting in the town treasury, right. then it would be possible if there was money left over at the end of the project. And the, the statutes are pretty clear about that. At the end of the project, um, uh, there is a provision for town meeting to transfer excess bond proceeds from one capital purpose to another. I mean, it has to be something for which the town can borrow for an equal or longer period of time. Okay. Uh, Similar to our area. end of the year balance transfers, but we still need the town meeting vote to do it on a capital project like that, a capital borrowing. So right, because town meeting voted a particular amount of money yeah. for each project. The ballot votes didn't. Right. So you'd have to you're changing the money amount. Yeah. Right, but you still need to I think of the I think the uh, if it were, if there was just was that simple majority or was that two thirds? Simple majority. If if the town voted, you know, wanted to change the nature of the senior center, say, wanted to add a wing that it hadn't contemplated earlier, town meeting voted, and I'm just giving a sort of a an example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that wasn't. Related and you know, so wanted to add an additional wing to the building somehow. That might not. Dor might not consider that to be uh, covered by the earlier voted debt exclusion. However, and this is not. I know, sites right over here. Um, 
in the other community I'm working with, they, they hit ledge and that added hundreds of thousands of dollars to the project cost in an unanticipated fashion. And that's the type of thing that we think probably DOR would say, yeah, you, uh, uh, you can include that. And if, especially if it's not a large percentage of the project cost. So one more theory or yeah. theoretical uh, situation. If a project was to finish in advance of another project that was ongoing, and we had existing borrowing authorization for that project, could we then do that borrowing and then do it funds transfer once that project is complete? Right away? Theoretically, is that because I, I'm just trying to think of the easiest and best appearing way to. If the hypothetical if the were to happen. Who's short? Nobody. This is all theory. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think that, um, I'll say that it wouldn't necessarily be something that I would recommend. Okay. But if it ended up that this was how things worked out, right. I mean, I'm not going to recommend that the town do something like that. But okay. Understood. Any other questions? No. Thank you, David, for you, sure. being very sharp on top of all our questions out of <laughs> thin air that we might come up with. But thank you for your answers and your guidance. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Lisa, take a, thank you, don't come to a meeting. Thank I miss quite a bit, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Things I think, missed, it, though. I think I've missed yeah. three in 17 years. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you both. Where's yeah. that? Yeah. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, um, we're going to have our tri-board discussion. Uh, I just had a few things I wanted to talk to, well, by board discussion, I guess, right now. Um, but a few things just to touch base with you guys on was for fiscal year 2019, um, our free cash numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have anything quite yet. Uh, talking to David earlier today, he's kind of sticking with a $650,000 estimate, but. Yeah, so I worked with the accountant uh, today, Don, specifically to see if we couldn't tighten up our uh, free cash numbers, and we don't have anything quite ready for certification. But given the estimates that we have, um, $650,000 amount that I used for the budget is a very safe amount at this time. That $650,000 gives you a $75,000 contribution to capital. So, so we're in relatively good shape. Does that include the fire or the uh, ambulance rebate? No. Yeah, we're still, go ahead. No, I was just, so I remember we approved a specific schedule was it to have a free cash number so that as long as everybody met their deadlines the, the account yeah. right do you remember was that the middle of september how yes. close are we so right it was like, it's like, a, like a week away or yeah. something okay. like that so so at our next meeting we should have we should have what well, we've submitted to the department of revenue certification or the certification by department of revenue one or the other and the revenue from the rebate right that is going to be tendered in this fiscal year that's right there's right. 105 day look back period so that takes us to the first week of october yeah. that'll that go happens. to the general fund though won't it it'll go that's to the general fund right mm -hmm. but that's are, are you putting that into response. free cash for general fund is that what, where it's going no because that's uh, okay. that would be money that came in after on july 1st okay Okay. Um, and then our fiscal year 2019, one thing I wanted us to be conscious of is capital spending. If capital projects were actually executed or if they're still out there in the ether, if they've gotten started, not gotten started. I know looking at the draft town meeting warrant, there were some articles in there of, you know, the police cruiser, the council on aging van, those kind of things where some money was going back into the budget some transfers so I don't know if there are other things out there that we can look at that you know capital projects that haven't 
been started or you know what what's going on with those projects what's, yeah, yeah, what's, so what's the list so um, there so is a list there so if you look it, at it on page yeah. 7 article 4 So this is our cleanup article. This is where we take the unused balances from uh, completed projects and return them to the pot from which they came, or to amend the borrowing in order to uh, clean up the ch account, chart of accounts. Uh, there are some projects here that have shown no movement. So the town hall pillars for $35,000, um, the uh, public safety installation at $9,500. The library shelving is a residual amount. Um, I, I have a question about the pillars. Why yeah. aren't you going to do the pillars? Uh, good question. I have uh, prepared the uh, bid documents for this. I'm waiting for the uh, specifications. And so this article will be shown to all the departments and say, OK, Moving the project, or we taking the money back? Well, that's at least my recommendation. I know that one too was in the uh, municipal building committee, right. so I don't know where that is exactly. For we can check with them. That's well, if you applied with the CPA and it was, and then it went through town meeting and it was granted, and they put a two-year restriction on it, so um, I mean, there's still done. time before they're <coughs> going to be requesting yeah. it back. Yeah, it might because be something I that there's. It's just premature to ask for that back. I think this is just to raise the flag. Oh, just to get the departments moving. And just get, just figure out where it's at, and then we can easily take it off of here. I think if it, if we want to, but just to know, kind of get that visibility because these are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these things have been hanging around since 2014. Um, so either complete the project or return the money because we have needs now that uh, we're going to have a difficult time funding them. So just one question about that, that 2014 article for North Hadley Rose Hall and Russell School, we were going to ask for $10,000 <coughs> for the architect. Can that money be used to fund that architect that the Municipal Building Committee was looking for? Um, yes, we could. Because it, rather than return it back and then and re ask for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We, would, we would have to double check with CPA to find out uh, if that's... Now um, on that, my understanding is because I did ask where that money because I the same same question was going because we have an article here with eight thousand dollars for Russell School right for the roof right. so yeah. it was based on what is the purpose when they applied and was granted through CPA on the application what was the purpose and so the most I got out of it so far and I think Linda looked it up maybe it was Linda looked it up for me it, there was a plan it was for a plan and that's what we're looking for, I think, for Russell School. So right? it depends what the, we have to double check what the purpose was for. Yeah. Okay. No, but, no. and, and I don't think that they had the two year limit back in 2014. I think that's no, relatively new. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is something that CPA is specifically asked to have returned. Um, it's worth our while to have a conversation with CPA to say, rather than return the money, let's fund the project which you did not fund for 10000 or 15000 whatever it was. Yeah. Right. And perhaps that's why they didn't fund the project. We don't know. So. Now, 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 the plan, the CPA plan that you're talking about for mm -hmm. the Russell School, right. that, it, it had enough, it, it was denied through the CPA. Mm -hmm. But right. the reason for that being oh, okay. was a couple reasons. One, nobody showed up to, to talk about it, mm. and there was questions. And the plan that, it was very confusing with what was submitted on the application. My understanding, just from listening to Tim explain what the plan was for, the plan was supposed to be for to find out what the purpose, you know, whether you could sell it, whether you will demolish it, whether you're going to um, partner up with someone. It was to come up with some ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought, but that's not what it said in the application. The application was more, this is, um, to come up with a plan more of how much it's going to cost, I think it said to demolish it or something like that. Yeah. Now, it was confusing, and that's so I think yeah. that the application wasn't clear on what you really were looking for a plan. Now, 
nobody wanted to fund another plan to um, say how much is it going to cost because we believe that it was already been done a couple times and that's where they came up with the numbers the 21 22 million dollars it was going to cost the dairy right. and then the other thing was it was talked about well we kind of have an idea of what it would cost to take it down possibly just to not you might have some roundabout estimate because you're taking down hooker school you know you know what how much does it come taking down hooker school so but if you're coming up with a plan to come up with you know could can we sell it how much would it be to sell it would so then but they said no this is not what it says on the application so they denied the application based on the purpose of it and they didn't mention that nobody was there yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's that they didn't mention that yeah but nobody showed up yeah you know so building committee when they said that they were surprised at was turned down but they didn't mention in that conversation that there's nobody there to speak to it. so we yeah. so yeah i know nobody came so we had all these questions so we gave them what whatever we could get at the time mm -hmm. there is another meeting set that they are doing um so if someone did want to go to it or something like that my suggestion is to do that that's on the ninth. okay the september 9th september 9th okay it's a Friday night, right? Thursday, Friday, Friday. It's the Monday. same as Capitol. Monday. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can run after. Or what time does that one start? 6.30. 6.30, okay. Okay. Anything else on those capital spending articles or remnants, I guess? No. Uh, then I had uh, our fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, after the state approved the budget, or the state came up with a budget and it was approved, we have $77,000 more in our budget than we originally had. So just to account for that. Um, 77,000, I think. 77,000, correct, yeah. With, I guess there was that more, much more state aid than what we were estimating. Okay. And that, David, that, I don't know if that information came in after our annual town meeting. We we passed a balanced budget at the annual town meeting. The Senate passed their budget that gave us a $50,000 boost. Then the conference committee passed their budget, which added another 27000 So um, we have a, a surplus that we can think about. And then my last thing on my list here for the, the budget, speaking of that, is just the fiscal year 2020 budget additions and adjustments. You know, with a lot of what we've been talking about of transition planning and those kind of things. Um, right now, we probably want some extra money in Council on Aging because, well, we're not gonna have a director for at least a few weeks. And then once we hire that new person, we're gonna probably wanna bring Suzanne back as a consultant just for a finite period of time to kind of help train the new person a little bit. Um, we're, inspections. we're also going to have that in inspections and there could be other departments that we don't know of yet where we have that issue coming forth um, so just having some money allocated for that kind of um, purpose would be nice I think and I don't know if you guys have any ideas about now transitions that. and some of it my first thinking was I, I can understand why you would want Suzanne to come back that would be helpful but mm -hmm. Suzanne's been there a little while, and I would, I almost was thinking that probably the next person wouldn't be as high of a pay grade, or I mean, not grade, but high as, as high of um, pay so, as Suzanne mm -hmm. necessarily. So that way, you're paying that person less, but you're, mm. you're paying a little bit to Suzanne. Yeah, uh, possibly. It's going to depend on the outcome of the hiring process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's speculative right now. We just don't know, right? Um, so what, what we do know is that we have personnel transitions. So I think that's that's yeah. that's kind of my point is yeah. we're going to have some transitions, uh, you know, that we might have to have some extra money for. So just to kind sure. of keep that out there when we're thinking about the budget, I guess. Yeah. So are you looking to add this to the next year's budget when we're putting doing the line items? You're this this would, would be the twenty twenty. This, this so would be a modification to the budget to be approved at the special oh, town meeting. Modification because a lot of times what happens is we get those when unexpected things come up. They ask for to take out of the money out of the finance reserve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. reserve. 
I'd like to see it stay as a buffer and use that rather than spend it. Is there a reserve? Yeah. We have a reserve for when a reserve account. items. Yeah, but it's fifty thousand, right? Right. Right. You're looking for a lot more. I mean, what's well, that you're looking for? We don't know. We don't know. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think maybe we do want to take that reserve and just put a little bit more cushion in there so we have it. You know, because we we can expect these fees or you know salaries, however you want to say, but we we might have something else we're not expecting that we might normally use that money for. So Just my opinion. I mean, we have a whole board. If we so. were to double or triple that reserve if we were able to, and then just leave it as a reserve rather than you know, designate it for depends on aging, then, yeah, yeah. Then, then at least if we need it, we need it. If we don't, then we can use it, you know, we can just keep that buffer rather than spend it. Or you know, people will have that. I guess, well, it would be I would think it might be just a temporary, maybe something, because we haven't been spending it every year. Yeah. No, we haven't. Right? Been. So I don't yeah. necessarily think down the road we need to increase it. Um, on, on a permanent basis. No, no, not, not permanent, just for no, the transition. Just for the transition. Yeah. I feel like we have a lot of transitions in the well, next I've, I've said for a long time, if you think about the reserve fund as a percentage of your budget, and think about that as your safety cushion, that's a very thin cushion. A uh, $21 million budget and you have $50,000 as your buffer. Mm -hmm. But we do have the stabilization you do, you do have yeah. that. That you don't want to touch, but that is yeah. for yeah. emergencies. I'm and just saying, so, my, I'm yeah. saying my annual thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just walk through the pros and, pros and cons. So yeah. just again, and I'm not advocating, I'm just, just saying. Um, if it, in the past there have been times where we adjusted line items at the fall town meeting because we had we had a no, like we, we, we already knew that something was gonna fall short and there was a plan for it and, and those monies were gonna be expended. So if, remember anything that goes into the Finance Committee Reserve Fund is at the discretion, sole discretion really, of the Finance Committee to release those funds. So depending on what the nature of the item is, I'm gonna just, mm -hmm. you know, we wanna make sure, I mean, I would argue if some of these things, if they're personnel related, mm -hmm. We don't want a situation where we make a personnel plan and then you guys are all very reasonable. I'm sure that we would win you over and you would see just the, but I mean, you could have a situation where the finance committee and the select board were actually at odds on something like that. So I think we just want to be, be careful on that. And do we, we have a select board item for reserve or don't we have a select board item in there? Yeah, small. The small small yeah. So we could always do it there if we wanted to. Maybe. Yeah, we could split it or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, just something to bring up as possibility. That's all. Um, so the special town meeting warrant. Uh, you know, we're running a little late here, so I don't know if we just want to close the warrant right now. If anybody has anything they want to bring up specifically. I was actually going to wait until the end of the meeting to close the warrant because of something that was on there. <laughs> and I forget what it was right now. Um, I've got one question on there. Since go Chris, ahead. Since Chris is here. Uh, Megan's way, Chris, is that is that all up to where it needs to be to, for the town to accept it, or is there still some issues there? Um, I mean, they don't put yeah, it on the spot, sorry. <laughs> I remember why. The last time we checked, Mr. Chair, um, the, the I guess we wasn't yeah. up to the point where we recommend, recommend that it town yeah. accept. But Why since then, I don't know if something else has been done. Nobody has brought to my attention. So this goes to the planning board first. Right. So, so, I guess my question or concern is do we want to have that on the on the warrant at this point if the roads are, are not up to the DPW of the town standards mm -hmm. to accept. It's kind of sounds like we're yeah. jumping. The well, do they, what we've done in the past, and it's been road specific, mm -hmm. there have been times where they were kind of close mm -hmm. and, and the DPW director thought that within a certain amount of time and well in advance of town meeting that they would be done. Um, but if there's a lot of work and they're not in communication, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, is this 
are the issues there something that you think can be resolved in the next month or so, or are they larger scale than that? It, it can resolve in the next month or so, depending on the the current owner of the road, how he or she wants to resolve it. So the last time that it came to my attention, um, it was almost coming before the board when I got to know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we, at that time, we felt that the road was not in, in a position where the town should accept the road. Mm -hmm. Now, since then, I, I don't know if work has been done on it. It hasn't been, I've, I've not been told to take a look. If the board allows me, I could do that uh, tomorrow. We could leave it on. We can always pull it. Yeah, I just don't, don't want it to make it a time meeting for it. It's not ready. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 We have up until the day of town meeting to actually pull it off of there. So. And the reason I wanted to keep it open until the end of the meeting was because we were going to be discussing North Adley Village Hall at this meeting, and I didn't know if we'd want to put anything on the warrant regarding that before we close it. So instead of closing it, opening it, and closing it again, we could just keep it open until the end of the meeting. But please remind me if uh, we get to the end of the meeting, we haven't voted on it, unless there are any other comments or any Joyce, other comments. Joyce, I made sure last meeting last week we waited for your opinion on that. Oh, mm -hmm. you, you know you didn't need to. <laughs> we're, not, we're not getting into it yet. Yeah. Alan, you had a question? Uh, are the CPA articles for the cemetery on the warrant, or do we have to? They're on there, yeah. They are on it? Yep, yep. There are a few of them. Three. Three of them. Right? Three, yeah. Okay. And I believe the one for the Golden Court will be coming off. Oh, coming off, okay. It'll probably be for the spring. Okay. Just, they're going to be coming off this. Okay, yeah, just let us know. What's CPA going to do with the Golden Court? I haven't windows. heard. They uh, want to replace the windows. Windows. Yeah, they have bad windows. Okay. Good. Okay. Article, Article three. This was supposed to be paired with the reduction in CPA, so I take the liberty of guessing that you would want to see this come up. Okay. Make a motion to remove Article three. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, and the last thing we had here was our financial plans and projections. Um, and we have a long range financial report. That's uh, this guy, right? not this one, this one right here. I don't know if you guys got a copy of that. That, I think it still needs to be updated, but 12-17-2018. Yeah. Um, and then the budget projection for five years. So that's that other guy that was up front there. Um, and this, this one was put together for the S&P Global uh, Review. Mm -hmm. David, I don't know if you have any comments on that or things you want to yes. draw to our attention. So the budget projection for five years is something that, as you said, we prepared for S&P uh, Global. Um, it uh, shows a couple of years where we're in surplus, uh, but then years three, four, and five uh, shows that we have shortfalls. Uh, this is usual when you're looking at a five-year projection because you use conservative estimates in terms of your revenue and you use conservative uh, ideas about your expenses, so your expenses are high, your revenues are low, and there's red ink in the two or three years. Um, but it helps to get there from here because you can make assumptions about high cost issues such as health care, insurance, um, you can plug in your OPEB uh, um, plan, you can look at uh, projected costs for s large ticket items such as school and get a sense of how you can shape the budget uh, in order to achieve uh, balanced budgets uh, going forward. Um, I did update it for the most recent uh, uh, numbers and uh, shows the $77,000 uh, surplus in FY2020. The other uh, uh, document is a long-range financial uh, trend analysis. This, I think, is um, 
a document that I find very useful when making recommendations about the budget or thinking about the budget or putting the budget book together um, because it gives us a longer than budgetary cycle rhythm for your finances, whether they be revenues, whether they be expenses, whether they be debt management, whether they be uh, looking at the enterprise fund or the general fund. Um, lots of different ways of looking at revenues. Uh, revenues adjusted for inflation, revenues from intergovernmental sources, one-time revenue, el elastic revenue. Uh, and it gives you a sense of how does this perform over a multi-year period so that you can see strengths and weaknesses in the budget, which may not be apparent if you just look at the budget from as a year-to-year -year exercise. Uh, we've been doing this since 2005. We've been able to backdate some of these as far back as 2003. Every year I add a couple of uh, new ways of looking at it. Um, we updated it in October and that becomes the backbone for a lot of what I talk about about the next uh, budget coming up. Yeah. Anything else you guys have? <coughs> Okay. Okay, this is the smallest amount of red ink that I think I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Okay, <coughs> great. Well, thank you very much for coming. Good night. Uh, real quick, we could do our consent agenda. Um, we have a few warrants. WP1958S, AP2009S-3, AP2009S-2, AP2009S, WP1958, AP1935, reissue 2, AP2010V, and then we have a sewer impact fee agreement, the village laundromat. And that is everything we have on our consent agenda tonight. If I can have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Can I pull out the uh, impact agreement just to have a couple questions? Sure. Okay. I'll second about that. Uh, any further discussion? Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, David. So for the impact agreement, I just wanted to know if there's a way that we could add something in there that states if the tenant were to fail to pay this impact fee, that the landlord would be responsible for it. And the reason I say that is we ran into this in the past where there was a dispute between the town and a tenant versus you know, who was, who was ultimately responsible. The town and the landlord, yeah. Yeah. And the landlord didn't want to pay it because they said it was the responsibility of the tenant. The tenant didn't want to pay it because they said it was the landlord. So um, I have no problem with the agreement itself. I just am concerned that if, if they don't if it were to fall apart, that we might not get our money. Question is, would there be a sewer impact fee if this There's business that. had to come in there? And if they, if they're only open till, let's say, six months or something like that, I, I hope they're open longer than that. But um, no, you know, twelve months. It's written in there that you're going to have a review on. Um, Oh, but, so. but what I was going to say is they would only make two payments on this, right. and usually the sewer impact fee is when you start the business. Right, so <laughs> would there be anything due if they stop doing business there after six months or something? I'm just throwing out a number. Right. Well, yeah, the, uh, the impact is based upon their business That's impacting the, uh, the sewer. So should they go out of the business, they would be, they would always leave the full amount. Yeah, but my only concern with that is typically when you, you give someone an occupancy permit for a business like this, their fees are due yeah. in advance before giving them the occupancy permit. Yeah. In this yeah. case, we're giving them the occupancy permit ahead of time for signing this agreement. And so let's just say they did go out of business in six months, and then we're going to be out that impact fee. All right. I have no trouble adding the landlord. That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, I, and we've done it in the past, too, and it, it even reverted back to the bank in one instance that I can remember. Mm. Um, well, yeah, and then we resolved the one between the landlord and the uh, 
tenant. Took a while, but yes. yeah. I mean, the only thing is, if they do go out of business, you could argue their impact on the sewer is no longer there. So, I mean, that would be my argument if I was them. Yeah. But, so, but then at the same time, if someone's paying their impact fees in advance, like, yeah. like they're supposed to, yeah. they can't come back they and say, well, say we need to credit us. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, tricky. Maybe you ought to look at those other two agreements and how they worked out. And mm -hmm. So I, I, don't have, that. I don't have a problem with the payment schedule. Everything else looks fine. It's just I just would like to see uh, someone else sign sure. up. Yeah. Make a motion that we approve subject to adding the uh, landlord. Is it back up? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Upstate. <coughs> uh, aye. Uh, six, seven fifteen public hearing. Yeah, yeah, seven fifteen hearing, public hearing, change of office directors, Whole Foods. Is someone here from Whole Foods? <coughs> no one is here from Whole Foods. Okay. Uh, this is their change of corporate officers. They are, um, the chief financial officer for Amazon and um, the chief general counselor are being added. Albert Percival, who was the uh, director, is now going to be as the acting secretary and he's actually the deputy general counsel. And they did not send anybody because typically for this, for officers changed, it's not something that really, y'all usually have to put a lot of questions for typically. Okay. Motion to approve? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. It's almost 720. Yeah. Well, we can wait a few minutes. Let's see. Do we think the Moody Bridge flat grant repurposing is going to take very long? Is that pretty simple? Uh, so we could move on to. Uh, Moody Bridge Road, <coughs> flat grant repurposing. Uh, Chris, I believe you're here to discuss the scope of work for the paving supplied under Federal Lands Accessibility Program for Moody Bridge Road. Yes, Mr. What? Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the, um, the Wildlife Refuge will um, uh, urge the town to see if we can make a request or urge them to make a request on behalf of the town to Federal Highway Administration. See if um, the flood front in the Federal Highway Administration can allow us to use it to pave Moody Road from Bay Road to the entrance to the wildlife. So uh, they approached me. I also, I've also spoken to the administrator, and I told them that uh, that would be something that the board would need to authorize me to do before. So that's why it's before the board. They're also requesting if we can allow them to put a gate. Currently, we have uh, Jesse barriers blocking. They would prefer if we can allow them to put a gate because of, oftentimes they do go beyond the Jesse barrier too. Yes. This would be. Uh I'm sorry, I forget who the Silvio Conti yes, yes. Fish and Wildlife, yeah. fish and wildlife yeah. was, would be putting would be paying for and putting in the gate. Yes. Okay. And that doesn't interrupt with any DPW work at all. No. They, w they also would give us a key just in case we need to. Okay. No water lines or anything else no. on there. How about all landowners that can't get through there right now? To their farm property. Yeah. That pipe should have been in the ground six months ago already now, eight months ago. There's no reason why we can't declare that an emergency and do exactly like they did over by Parsons on Mill Valley Road. Put a double barrel, two four foot pipes in and get it over with and fix the road. Chris, have you had this is ridiculous. from landowners <coughs> who can't access the property? I thought that was all Silvio Conte land. The, yes, it's the land, but the Moody Road, Body Bridge Road is a town road. So oh, you mean to get through there? To get through. So, but but because the flood grant is not being used at this time, mm -hmm. so they are, are basically trying to see if we allow them to speak on behalf of the town 
to lobby Federal Highway Administration to use the money mm -hmm. to pay the Moody other Bridge. part of Moody Bridge. Yes. Yeah, that's in disrepair. Yeah. yeah, and the residents on that end are very much in favor of this, yeah. from what I understand. So. Well, I'll make a motion to approve uh, just with the addition that we ensure that DPW, police, fire, action EMS, and everybody else that needs a key to get down to get down there for emergency purposes has one, not just fish and wildlife. Right. So. Yeah, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that covers the black topping. Is that a motion? Oh, yes, to be clear for, for right. both motions. For the flat and the gates. Okay. And now we have a public hearing change of manager at 110 Grill. Is anyone here from 110 Grill? Up. Oh. Yes, me. Yes. Joe Malinowski. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, when you open it. <laughs> as soon as I hire a couple more people. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're that close? Well, yeah, our building's ready. Mm -hmm. um, October 3rd, hopefully, can be our opening day. Okay. Um, training before that. We have orientation on the 20th, training the week of the 23rd to the 28th, friends and family on the 1st, and we have a big party on the 2nd, and then the 3rd would be opening at 4 o'clock. So. Great. Yeah. yeah. And you're taking over from, I think, the gentleman that was the manager was setting up the whole restaurant and now. I believe it was Patrick. Yeah, yeah. He's, the, he's the regional <coughs> manager. Regional. Patrick's my regional area director. Mm -hmm. director. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with Patrick for 25 years. Oh, I've wow. taken okay. over this location. I opened the one in Holyoke this past year, around okay. Christmas time. Bad, bad time to open. <laughs> or good time. Yeah. Um, very hectic, it's doing very well. Mm -hmm. And um, I live in Montague, grew up in Hatfield, originally from Amherst, but I was going to say um, that last name has to be local. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm closer to home now. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Nice. Nice to Great. have you here. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you very much. Can't wait for you to open. All right. Good, good luck for the year. Good luck, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Enjoy your night. Yeah, thank you. So uh, since everyone is here, we can, even though it's not uh, necessarily on our agenda, but we could do library, senior center, and fire substation updates. Um, I don't know if you guys want to start with the library. Library folks are here, so where you guys want to start? Uh, so yeah, so, uh, so the, the library brought to my attention a concern about uh, work that was done on the sidewalk and the water system um, is, uh, that was associated with this project. Um, there was a number of uh, invoices that came my way uh, from DPW. I forwarded them onto the library. The library came to me and said these are not necessarily our expenses. So we're in the process of going through all the documentary uh, information in order to find out what happened clearly some sort of miscommunication or misunderstanding occurred. Um, not sure why this wasn't handled as a change order for the project since it did involve the general contractor. Um, so a couple more days I need in order to put things together and then we'll work on making this project uh, go forward and the bills paid in a timely manner. So can you explain what will happen in the next few days, like what the process will be um, going forward with the bill? Because, I mean, it was not brought to our attention. It's not a change order because there was no change order submitted. So what will happen? Tell us what, how will this play out in the next few days? Let me talk about the process. Okay, so these projects have a process that processes any change in the scope of work. Uh, by contract should result in a change order, which is reviewed and um, and thought through yes. and planned for. We know that. We okay. agreed to that. All right. At the beginning. All right. So that didn't happen in this case. I don't know why. So I need to find out, A, what went wrong with the process, if 
So we did not approve that work. The library board, we did not approve that work at all. It never came to us. It was not approved by we the trustees that. or the billing committee. Well, I'm just being clear about that. So I want that known here that we did not, were not, that work was not brought in front of us. It was not asked to go out to bid. So we actually don't have much to do with the bill. Well, that remains to be seen, isn't it? It's something that we need to find the facts. We need to find out what the process was. And we need to make sure that this project continues to move forward and that uh, the bills are paid. I don't know who's going to end up paying them at the end of the day. I think that I just need a little bit more time in order to sort this out. So will it be discussed at this meeting next? Where will it be discussed again so that the, the library trustees can be there to discuss it? Um, will it be at a select board meeting? What are the next steps? The next step, as I said, is that I have to yep. do the investigation in order yep. to get the facts. Those facts will lead me to the process by which we move this project forward and get the bills paid. I can't tell you exactly what it's going to be. Very likely it will come back to the select board. Um, and i will certainly be working hand in glove with Patrick and with Chris Okafori and we'll get this sorted out. I'd recommend too that the project OPM, I'd like to hear from him a little bit if this work is... They're here. We have a... Okay. Yep. Yeah, so can you just explain, I, I mean, maybe we don't need to explain right now, but I would like to hear, you know, how this might have happened if, you know, work was done, paying an OPM to oversee work on the site. We should be alerted of change orders if they're happening on the site. and. Like I said, we don't have to get into it right now. I'll let David pursue the investigation because there's probably more to it than I know of, but just my comment um, right now, I guess. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, Thank you. I, yeah. May I, do I have permission to, to speak? Sure. Yeah, you can okay, speak. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Carl Ferguson. I'm with DA Sullivan, and I'm uh, currently serving as the clerk of the works for the library project, and I was. Uh, I was asked to come this evening just to um, essentially offer some input on what the current condition of the project was. And essentially what I'm, what I'm referencing this evening is something that I believe all of you already had copies of, and it's my daily job report, mm -hmm. which uh, was dated August 7th, and it explained the, uh, the events that transpired just prior to uh, the approval, or the understanding of the approval of the work. And, um, I'm also referencing um, emails dated August 7th that I had written um, after my discussion with Dan Susi, who is the superintendent for Orlando and Uli. So my conversation was with him. The information I gathered, uh, I immediately reported to Mark Sullivan. He then immediately reported to Phil O'Brien, the project architect, who then proceeded to get emails to various uh, individuals. I know Chris was sent an email. Um, just to try to get some clarification on the process, uh, how it would proceed, and um, my understanding from speaking with Dan uh, Susi was that he had a, a meeting with Chris that afternoon, and there was some discussion about the, uh, the work that was going to proceed, and they wanted to proceed with the work in that fashion. So. All that is written in these uh, pieces of information that you folks, I believe, already have. So that's essentially where I am at this point. If, if I can answer any specific questions, I'd be glad to. Uh, I know that there's been a discussion about further investigation. So all I'm referencing here tonight is the fact that this, this is the information that I proceeded, I, that I wrote and uh, have submitted on uh, August 7th. Do you mind giving it to David just so we know he has a copy of it Absolutely. instead of... Uh... So what exactly did happen? And you want, what are you saying? You didn't get any of this information? Or? So what happened was um, there, we received two invoices from uh, one of the contractors and it had to do with the water line. And so I think that, like many of the things in town, there was some discovery that what perhaps we thought was there wasn't exactly the way it was configured. Um, the DPW got involved. 
location appropriately to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then working with folks on site determined what they thought was the best course of action in order to rectify that situation. In the course of that, and I'm keeping it really simple, <laughs> in the course of that, it seems that there was a communication handoff issue. So what we're left with right now is a situation where we have invoices and there's not a lot of clarity until David finishes what he's doing, nor a recommendation on the table. Um, but there's not a lot of clarity over who really is responsible for those invoices. Is it all on the library project? Is it all on the, on the town vis-a-vis -vis the DPW? Or is it perhaps something a little bit in between? Mm -hmm. So that's why David's saying it's complicated enough that he wants to have more conversations before we bring it back mm -hmm. to kind of resolve it. And, and it may be something that David's able to handily resolve with some cunning stratagem, I don't know, but mm -hmm. rather than get everybody in a, a whirl mm -hmm. about yeah. it without okay. all of the facts in front of us, I think David's taking an appropriate course. Okay, because this just came out yesterday, right? Right. The invoices. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. We received it before yesterday. It's recent and it's a holiday weekend, right? So I know, I'm just being okay. It's been very recent, so. And like I say, the first time the select board or anybody from the select board saw it was yesterday. That's what I was referencing. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it, so. Right. <laughs> Could I just, yeah, I'm not speaking for the trustees, but the, from my perspective, the library has a contract to do, to, to, it, which included tying into the water main for, for water mains. And we're covering that. When they went to tie in, some people, I don't know who it was, the EPW had a look at it and said, well, this is, whatever's down there doesn't look right. We need to fix that. Well, that's, a, that's the town's water service. It's not the library's. Um, I mean, it's, eventually it is. But that particular hydrant and the service, which serves more than the library, there's a problem with it. And fine, it should be fixed. We'll fall for that. But it's, it strikes me as being that's the, that's a town issue. You discover a problem in the street or in the sidewalk, and you directed our people to fix it. But and and, and my understanding was it was the DPW was going to take care of the of those costs. Now I mean maybe some things were kind of jumbled and and, mi and some missteps were taken. But I mean the, the bottom line is this is never a part of the library's responsibility. I don't think it is or should be. It's a, it's a time responsibility. I, I would argue right? that we have an OPM that's supposed to process change orders and identify changes on the site and flag these issues and come to the board with those changes. So if there are changes occurring, we shouldn't be willy-nilly changing them. We have the OPM well, we to directed by the, do it. We were directed direct, by the DPW director. Yeah, see, so, so should we And so that's why I feel like there still needs to be an investigation yeah, because exactly. maybe there was some confusion yes. there that it needs to go over and maybe we shouldn't dive too deep into it right now because we're all presuming yeah. a lot of things. So right. we're not here in a, in a court setting. We're just giving an update as to momentary confusion. We'll sort it out will have some concrete ideas about how to move forward. Um, it is not our place right now to speak without facts. Mm -hmm. And what I will, you know, again, so it helps people. Um, we did agree on and vote upon a change order process. I think if nothing else, this recent event has underscored the need for everybody to be fully familiar with that change order process. And I've been very comfortable going forward that people will be hyper vigilant to that. But in the mean and then we'll deal with the other issue as we may over the next few days. Can I make one related request from the, the OPM aspect of things? Um, if there's any way to improve communication with the DPW and other town departments that may be somehow involved in the project, it would be appreciated. Um, I know that s emails are sent out to some individuals at the DPW on a daily basis about what's happening, but it seems like not everybody's getting those at DPW that should. So if we can just kind of tighten that up a little bit, maybe talk to Chris and see who can, should be on that distribution. Can I say something about that? I think that, and I think Molly pointed this out to us, it, for some reason through town email, it goes in people's 
trash bins? Is that what she said? It was her junk spam, mail? Spam, spam okay. maybe? Yeah. So we are sending them to a lot of people who don't seem to be receiving them. Okay. Um, and um, we kind of ran up with that, I think, with Christian. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, he's on the list, but then I think it's going to his spam mail. So there must be something in the town. Yeah, it's catching it in the filter. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to say that on behalf of the OPM, it's catching does a daily report. It goes out. I thought it goes out to everybody. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It's just I think there's it's a problem. Damn there. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's one of the best, most thorough reports I've ever seen off of projects like this. Uh, all and, I'm saying and, is, uh, and maybe I'm on the list, but I haven't seen a single one since any of the projects started. Uh, not that I need to, but I'm just saying if it, it's not obviously going out to everybody, and I, I'm just telling you from what I'm being told, it's not yeah, making it to the, library library to the to the yeah, problem. Yeah. If everybody who has a town email account will check in your spam folder, it says Raken R A K E N. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go That's in there, click on it, move it to your inbox, and from then on, it will yeah. recognize it. Yeah, mine comes in every day now. Yeah, it'll come in. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and we have to keep the filters through. on, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you I don't see it in my spam folder either, stuff. but yeah. it might not. I'm not on it, but I have. It, it's not in the town email, because I have been checking it. But uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's coming It's coming to my, my own personal email. Yeah. And I've been getting everything right. from you people, from the, the OPMs, everything. Oh, so, so how about anybody who isn't getting it, who wants to get it, um, to make it easy, could we just have the fire step fire station? Let Jennifer no, know, and then Jennifer can account. communicate too. Yeah, I can get that. I know you. My Yahoo <laughs> and don't take that as a, a dig against you. I'm just trying to fix the problem. That's all. That's yeah. all it is. And yeah. whether it's it looks like a little bit of a lack of yeah. communication on our part here, and I just realized that now myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Because I've been getting it all right along. So. Okay. Well, I'm happy to get that information. Okay, we'll get that Thank fixed, you. and then we'll move on <laughs> yeah. to the important stuff. Okay. Any other updates on the library side? You guys look like the hooker yeah. school is halfway down. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Uh, fire substation. Any updates there? Was no, there a change no. order? I didn't get a change order yet. Um, There's something for the water tie in there. Yeah. Change order upgrade change. insulation that the fire substation project owns. Where'd you get that? From Phil. <laughs> uh, um, I didn't get into my email today. I know they probably had a meeting this morning. Uh, yeah, it was only a minimal amount of insulation in the road anyway, wasn't it? It's uh, radiant heat, That's rigid good. insulation. We've laid the groundwork for the radiant heat. Um, I have a meeting next Tuesday night, so with the finance, I'm on the finance part of it. Okay. From five to five thirty, so that would come to me then. Okay. <coughs> but they're uh, they're moving along. Okay. And then on the senior center, I mean, it's really moving along over there. It's crazy. Those framers are. Go right. ahead. Yeah. No, crazy people. Um, and I don't know if you've all seen, but Handley Media put out a time lapse from their camera today. Which oh. is really fun. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah. And they, it's go to Handley Media, and they have a YouTube address. It's up until September second, and it goes from it, the foundations are in, but it goes from there in two minutes to the whole thing. That's where it is now, which is great. And we do continue to find things underground that are unexpected and unanticipated. Which brings up yeah. The request. Yeah, I was going to bring up a change. I don't have the official change order, but I know. So when we were excavating out there, uh, found a uh, retired septic system, I guess. Um, so there are things on the ground out there. They are asking for requesting a $7,500 change order in order up to, up to $7,500 change order to remove that and then backfill. Well, so. if you had a house out there, there had to be a septic system. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. On the other side of the field, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you never know. So I look for a motion for that change order. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and I think that was everything on there. On the senior center front, it's Suzanne's last day tomorrow. Um, so. We wish her well, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll miss her here. Anything else on that? Let's get back to our agenda. Okay.
Well, thank you. Thank you all. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Did we have that? Was that in an email? Yeah. It was a or did you have that printed out, David? Yeah, I gave you the copy of that. Did yeah. you give me that a copy? Oh, great. Hold on. Sorry. Probably put it in one of these. Oh, yeah. So we have a recommendation to hire Mr. Kim Keegan as the backup driver uh, for the Council on Aging van. Uh, he lives in Sunderland. He has driven a 28 passenger bus for Thayer Care from 2011 to 2017. Worked as a PVTA driver, dispatcher for the town of Amherst in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, he's not related to the select board member? He's not related, no, no conflict of interest. <laughs> Make a motion to accept Mr. Keegan. Second. And he will go through the Corey check, correct? He's already been. Think, He's yeah. already been. Okay. Okay. Just, just questioning. All those in favor? Aye. 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 How often is that? Every two years on the Corey? There's a, there's a time limit. There's on. Time I just read that on. somewhere. Yeah. yeah, something like that. I think it's every two years. Uh, I missed out on public comments. I don't know if anyone is here for I public comment. For I'm sorry about that's, that. Oh, that's fine. I'm sorry. I have two comments. So, but one of course is on the North Hadley Hall. So I'll wait to discuss that because you're going to discuss. Yeah, it. that's coming up. So the other one was on Centurica Park. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you all for doing the mowing or whoever was responsible for it. I was so stressed about that place. Kind of. Have, did you see it? It was kind of getting. Mm -hmm. overgrown mm -hmm. over the top yeah and I thought the kids are going to be coming back to school parents find their way through the back ways to get there and I just didn't think it looked very pretty at all mm -hmm. so I don't know who was responsible but going forward we spent so much money on the park I'm wondering if is there a plan in place to make it keep looking nice so Chris deserves the credit for getting the contract. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Chris and I are working on a maintenance plan. Oh, you are? Yeah. I would be grateful for that. That would be nice. And that, from that, the DPW, I believe, is going to be responsible for mowing. My understanding. Oh, I don't know if let's, they... Let's have a conversation oh. about that. Well, you know, okay, we're not quite there yet. We were talking about budget earlier. That should have come up. But I can tell you that it won't be overgrown again. Yeah. It won't be? For, at least for the rest of this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're so going to take care first, of, yeah. uh, at least for now. Because we don't need kids running around in the high grass with ticks, ticks and mosquitoes right, yeah, exactly. and everything else around. I think we should at least maintain it. There are also seniors who really like to walk there, and they were very upset when mm -hmm. it wasn't maintained. Mm -hmm. Well, you know how things go. Things get built, and, they and we get never maintain them. That's right. Well, hopefully that'll change. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Jane? Public comment. Yeah, public comment. Kudos to the DPW for painting all those posts around town. I didn't even know we had all of those until they got painted. <laughs> <laughs> they look so nice. <laughs> I mean, some of them really look awful, but they still look better when they're painted. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're only probably half done, <laughs> believe That's it or not. That's great. That's so oh. nice. Yeah. really makes a difference. Thank you. Well, as long as we pass along. Praise, praise, I'll add mine to the DBW, as a cemetery committee chairman. Mm -hmm. You know, we transitioned into the new regime where DPW is basically running the show, and, they, and we have new mowing contractors now, and we're doing uh, they own our own burials. And as far as, I, from my perspective, everything's working great, okay. really smooth, and uh, so the cemeteries look good. And uh, nobody's calling me up complaining. Mm -hmm. And they're just looking for information on their ancestors, which is that's so I'm happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, this is a long time in coming. And, and uh, I know Marlo worked on it hard with me. And so far, so, so far, so good. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> okay, all set. Um, move on to the new business, our SWOT analysis. Maybe these people here, so don't have that. Oh, we could, we, you want to do that real quick? You just want to dive right in there? Okay. Let's dive. Okay. Joyce is requesting so North Hadley Village Hall. That. So so they don't have to listen to all that mundane things yeah, about the yeah. SWATs. So. Come on. <laughs> I was trying I to keep to, you awake. I hate to tell you how I really feel about the SWAT analysis, yeah. but anyway. 
Uh, okay, so the select board is reviewing the proposals for the sale of North Hadley Village Hall. We decided last week to hold off on making any kind of decisions until this this week. Um, I also wanted to keep the special town meeting warrant open in case we wanted to put anything on the warrant regarding our decision to um, to the village hall. So, um, Joyce, you weren't here last week. I don't know what your feelings are. You want to <laughs> Oh, I mean, you don't need to know really okay. my feelings, but um, you know what I prefer to do with the building. But if everybody voted to put it out for bid, um, <coughs> I think that both bidders are under the assumption of uh, the ball field came with it, except for um, historic renovations and um, rental properties. They wanted to lease the ball field, um, but I think that that wasn't included and I think that uh, are you Peter back there yeah were you under the assumption that the ball field was within the property also no I wasn't under the assumption I, I was told that it wasn't part of it but okay. I didn't see anything happening with the building without the playing field being a part of it mm -hmm. okay. anybody else uh, have any feelings over the week so that was. Uh, can I ask you if uh, the ball field can't happen based on the town meeting vote? Uh, at least that's my perspective. I don't know about the rest of the select board. Mm -hmm. So, are you still interested in the project? I and mean, are you still interested in keeping your bid in there if the ball field can't happen? I don't see that there's enough space. I mean, even if I was to live there, you have zero green space. You're living on an asphalt world. So there is there is no outside living space whatsoever that's not asphalt that comes with the building. Ma'am, you were here, you wanted to say something yeah. about North so, Hadley? So I'm Martha Boyceford, I live in North Hadley. Mm -hmm. And I've lived in North Hadley all my life. Not that it, that gives me any more clout about <laughs> what to do about the building. I just wanted you to know I love North Hadley. I love the village hall. Um, I went to church there as a kid. My older siblings went to school there. I spent years in 4-H there, never mind the library that I went to, or my siblings went to, my kids went to. However, it will never again be a church or a library or a place for kids. I think, and I think for me, it would be more heartbreaking to see it used as apartments or whatever than it would be to take it down and and just look at the pond, look at the North Hadley Pond. I can't believe that the town, really, do we need the 70000 or 100000 that it would bring? At the very least, what I'm asking you is please don't change that family's will for the ball field. They had, they gave it to the town for a specific person, uh, for a specific purpose, and I would hate to see that changed in any way. I think town meeting took care of that. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have a choice there. Yeah. So. <coughs> so, as a person who lives in North Hadley, I would just say, take it down. And let's look at the pond. The pond doesn't look so pretty now, but you know, it has seasons and it's beautiful. It could be a great vista. Once land is gone, it's gone. It's, it's done. That's my comment. Can I offer a, point, a, a comment? Go ahead, Alan. Yeah. I mean, I think, first of all, it's, there's no point in going back to town meeting. Even if the proposals are solid, we'd have to go back to town meeting. If you like the proposals for any reason or thought there was any possibility of going forward, we would have to go back to town meeting and, and have that vote retaken because in order to remove Chapter 97, it doesn't mean that you don't get open space necessarily. You could still have part of the field uh, that's not used for parking for open space. That's, a, that's under one proposal, the one that requires parking. The, uh, Mr. Hieronymus? Is yes. As I understand his proposal, he is not talking about building a parking lot on the ball field, but using it for lawn parking 
for the, mu the music venue that he's proposing. Right. So which essentially, is essentially the field would only be used maybe 12 or 14 times a year for lawn parking. That's it. Other and than that, it would be it would look exactly the same. Yes, yeah, so not paving it. Um, is would be using it similar to the way the church uses it for their uh, events, which is fine. I think it's a great kind of multi-use there. You, they use it as needed. They don't wreck it, and it's there as open space. The thing about taking the building down to make open space is, yeah, we would get open space, but we have to spend seventy thousand uh, dollars, sixty to ninety thousand dollars, to knock the building down. That building, that part of the, of the property that the building is on, doesn't have frontage on the pond. Uh, is in a butter that so you might get more open space but it's not waterfront space and then we'd have to you know you're not gonna just leave a leave it look like uh, a bunch of rubble you have to we'd have to you know do something with it to make it look presentable that's more money and we do lose the building and we do lose any possibility of gaining any kind of tax um, revenue from from reusing it so I mean I don't think that's an easy choice uh, or maybe it is easy for you folks because I know there's a feeling that okay we've been wrestling with this for years let's get it let's get put it behind us and move on and I do respect that I also want to commend the select for at least trying you know a couple of times to get some things forward and, you know on the other hand it's like if there's a couple of proposals and they have any possibility of going forward understanding that you need town meeting okay I, I would like to see us explore it fully because this is one of five buildings in the town, historic buildings. We're losing one this week. There's a 50-50 chance that Russell, we won't be able to find a partner with that. And so we're losing, we're potentially losing most of our historic buildings. If there's any chance to keep them, we should at least make, at least be able to look ourselves in the, in the mirror at the end of the day when the dust is settled. We've done. We have gone the extra mile to make sure there's no other alternative. We don't make any you know, snap judgments. I know them. I don't think this is a snap judgment. I mean, we've been trying to get this done for years. And one thing I can't understand is what happened to the last time there was there was a proposal from I think one of the same the same gentleman. It seemed to go nowhere. I never saw any final decisions on anything. Maybe there were some issues, but they weren't really. Maybe they could have been solved. I don't know. Um, well, so, I don't know about the past, but I don't. This, this yeah. time, I think we're all intent on making a decision one way or another and dealing with this this year because we, yeah. we decided I, that I, we would. I was going to suggest, and, and this voice for her has, has answered part of it, is have you talked to the North Hadley people? I mean, I've, I've there, talked there, to There were hearings. So. Yeah, I've, I've talked to a few. I've talked to the Butter, and he yeah. said, I don't know anything about these proposals. I look at it more. Yeah. So I was thinking, if, you know, if there's any chance of going forward, I would say the first thing that would have to be done is have a meeting up there. And this has been on the people. agenda with them for 15 years, Alan. What, we've who? been doing this for 15 years. Yeah, but I mean, we've had we've had plenty of opportunities, and the restrictions that the historical society put on them to begin with was outrageous. What, what historical society? The historical, well, historical commission. commission. Mm -hmm. uh, so they it wasn't a friendly. Uh, lease that there were the uh, sell point that they wanted to do to for it so that was one reason why it didn't ever go forward with that with, okay. with, with their restrictions so could, could David <coughs> could you lay out for us what our options are right now could, could I just oh, well, so if, if there is I don't understand this article 97 I believe it is yep. yeah but if there is a way that the land could come with the building I would be more than happy that it be stated in the deed that it would never be developed, and that it, it's still maintained open space. We could it could be put right in the deed that this cannot be developed. I need it for law and parking. That's it. There is one little story building I want to talk in the back corner. Yeah, but we still have to go petition the legislature That's, to take I mean, it out of Article 97. Just saying, if it's so possible, we'd have to go back to town meeting to do if that. If it's possible that it could happen, and the town would like to see this happen and have me restore the building and go forward with this, I'd be more than happy to do whatever it takes on my part to make sure that that land stays grass. So can private land have Article 97 protection or just public land? 
It'd be open space with restrictions, but not, not for like Chapel 97. Just for everybody's uh, benefit, uh, Article 97 refers to a clause within the uh, Massachusetts Constitution. It basically says that if you put uh, land, public land, into uh, uh, park or active recreation use, it has to stay there for all of time, unless you find compensatory land that is not under Article 97 and designated through the help of the Massachusetts legislature to do that. That was what was presented to annual town meeting was an article to remove the uh, petition the uh, legislature to re remove the 97 uh, uh, restriction on the ball field and place it on a larger part of uh, land which was not under Article 97 but should be and the voters didn't go for that. Okay, but but it was no there was no specific proposal alternative. The alternative was put more money into it as, as, as a town building or demolish it. Now you have a different choice. You have privatized reuse and re renovation or demolish it. It's different choices. And maybe, I, I don't know if the town meeting would ever go for it. And I wouldn't even recommend going back to the town meeting unless the people in North Hadley were, you know, were okay with it. But it's a different, to me it's slightly different because you have two specific renovation proposals on the table. We didn't have that when we went to town meeting last year. It was nothing, it was nothing. So just for what it's worth. So <coughs> what are our options right now? Options are to um, go back to town meeting and ask for an Article 97 exclusion again, petition the, the, the legislature for the removal of that with the information that we have two proposals in front of us. Um, the other option is to reject the bids and um, rebid this. Um, the, the other option is to reject the bids and demolish the building, uh, which we would need to raise the money for. Um, you can negotiate with the high bidder um, for um, an alternative to the offer that he's placed on the table. Um, I think those are your options. Renovate the building. Renovate the building. Yeah. I think we're way past that. that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, my statement last week was, you know, at seventy thousand dollars, you can't buy a postage stamp in the town of Hadley right now, a piece of property with a ranch house on it for less than three hundred thousand dollars, and they're buying these houses and putting another hundred fifty or two hundred thousand dollars into them for a small family to live in. And we've had appraisals on this building and this parcel of land by itself at two hundred forty thousand dollars. You know, a hundred thousand dollars for just the property is reasonable. You know. And everything we've had coming in is has been below it. I, I'm I, I don't want to see it knocked down. Quite honestly, I'd like to see it like they did on West Street with the old fire station and repurpose it and made a couple apartments out of it. And it's it's a nice little place over there on a common now. You know, I, I would like to see somebody take take the incentive like this gentleman possibly and uh, and make it work and and make it fit into the. I would really Historical like to see this building look nice again. Yeah. yeah. That's what I do. So what I don't want to do is go back to town meeting and yeah. delay this because uh, we're going to have ongoing maintenance costs for the furnace, uh, roof issues, all kinds of other stuff that's going to be... We're gonna and it's going to be abandoned in a matter of mm -hmm. eight, ten months anyway mm -hmm. now, so... Right. Yeah, I mean, I totally say abandoned. we either, we either so reject I make a, both I make a motion to, uh, to sell it to the highest bidder. That way it doesn't cost us anything to take it down. With no parking, or the, just yeah. that limited parking. Yes, parking. just the way it is. Well, but I mean, that's a, that's a question I think. I so, still so would like to go back to town meeting. I, well, I well, do appreciate. We can do that. But I, li I, yeah. I like this gentleman's idea about um, approaching the legislature and at least allowing it to be used uh, for open space and a deed on it saying you know not to be used for parking or whatever that it would be 
um, something that would stay open. Right. Um, and if it's in our purview to put it into a deed, then I think we should do that also. We got sixty to ninety thousand dollars for uh, rough estimate to take it down. And look at what we ran into over mm -hmm. here with a with a hooker school. Okay. But is it like a conditional acceptance? No. Because it seem seems like uh, the gentleman's you know what you thought that you were bidding on. It's I think you've got more clarity. No, now. he said at the beginning that he yeah. was aware it was yeah. only. I was aware of that. Yeah. And, uh, just like I think Joel was because he came yeah. at the same time. That's why he put an offer in to lease the ball. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, honestly, I, I'd been driving by for two weeks and saw the sign and didn't even realize that it was really for that building. And uh, my friends here helped me put together this proposal quite quickly. And it's something I've been thinking about for a while. But the one thing is, the, the building's beautiful. And I even went there as a child, and the fireworks were there in North Hadley, and the Polk Band used to play in the field, and it was a great time. Yeah. So, um, you don't want to mention fireworks. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the fireworks <laughs> aren't there anymore. But, no, no. Yeah, I, I love the, the fireworks up there. there. Yeah. I didn't like the aftermath of it. I think the building can shine again, mm -hmm. and it, it fits into a few different ideas of what I've had for my idea of a retirement. And um, but the plan doesn't work without those 12 to 14 days of parking. It just doesn't. Work. I mean, can you use Article 97 land for parking? We're doing it now. I mean, it's open space. There, so wouldn't the town have to, to use it now? Enter into a lease agreement, with or the would it just be like the town common, and you get a one-day permit, or however many days? Yeah, yeah, and then you can kind of. Does the church get a permit every time they use it? No. So. Mm -hmm. it's good point. And we don't want to do anything. If we're just the church talking about something like that, my, how extreme is it? My concern for whoever would buy it is the planning board and the parking requirements. Right, but we can't presume what another elected body will do. We could warn these people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm wondering if maybe there should be Have you gone some before time planning boards before? Discussion between? Have I? Yeah. Uh, or the... Yeah. No, I mean... <clears throat> okay. So have you, you haven't done any of the... any projects like this before? Not exactly like this, but I've done quite a large projects, yeah. Could, could we agree on anything tonight or maybe, I don't know how to involve the planning board in the process because I feel I like they should be involved. I the answer for me right now. I understand that this is a little bit confusing. But again, I, I said this earlier. If, if this is something that the town thinks they would like to see happen and see someone else restore the buildings, get something that going there that people can come and enjoy, and, town starts to get tax revenue again the field stays open space if this is something that you guys think would be a good vision for you then let's figure out what needs to happen to make it happen do so you feel like you it need doesn't to, have to happen tonight do you feel like you need to go before the planning board before you actually know what you so. can I had some preliminary conversations with Tim about what might may or may not be able to be used in the building mm -hmm. and um, I would like, yeah. as far as using the parking on the ball field, if we were to work something out like that, I think it would have to be specified in a agreement, uh, you know, a certain number of days per year not to exceed, and there would have to be some shared maintenance costs as well, because if you and park, I would, park 50 cars in there and you end up tearing up the field after, after a rainstorm, the DPW shouldn't have to be repairing it. Um, and I but, don't think it could be in a deed anyway. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if we were to do something like that, the price on the property would have to be more than 70000 because you, in essence, are getting the use of that ball field to some degree. So I still don't think that the $70,000 price covers both of those. Right. But that, that's where I stand. So otherwise, tear it down and leave the, leave the space open. And just for discussion, I, you know, we're already maintaining the common and we're already maintaining that ball field and it would be available for right. people in North Hadley to use if we kept it. Right. So 
I don't, I don't know. I could see both sides of I that. I, I see, like, yeah, that's see, true. There should be some, some shared maintenance, some kind of perhaps, but then again. Some negotiations that maybe he'd be interested in maintaining it for 50 years or something. Or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could discuss what it would be. Absolutely maintain the green spaces. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, can, can I ask a question that's a heck of a question? Uh, does the select board, can the select board, or can somebody in town issue a, like a license, a one-day license, like we do for liquor licenses, for parking, for that kind of parking, lawn parking? We do for the common. That's what we were just saying. Yeah. Oh, that's right. For the, uh, for so that that's comes from the select board. Yeah. yeah. You don't go to the planning board for that. No. Right. No. No. Yeah. So I mean, so right now, I mean, I I definitely, I'm, it's, I feel like we're close. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I want to be, you know as above board and fair as possible and what I'm struggling with is d do we reject both bids and then give both bidders an opportunity to come back do we I mean right now this is the high bidder but I think I mean I'm agreeing with you I don't think it's high enough I mean so and then it seems like we still need a lot of some more clarity on the actual use proposed use because it's kind of a moving target for us so what's would, the best way for us to do would that? it be helpful if uh, we take this under advisement until the next time in the interval I talk to uh, town council and just say okay so what really are our, our options with an article 97 property can we lease it for parking purposes right. um, or, or can we at least just let them use yeah. it or because because I, think just let them yeah. use it I think the lease might be a little sticking point yeah. if we were to allow them to use town facilities or properties just like we use the common yeah, we don't necessarily so lease the common the common law use right. of the property right? okay uh, the other would thing would that be helpful to yes, the board if I did that exactly. yeah i think that would be good what about leasing the property to him for 99 years you can't like they did in Hatfield. No. no so that's uh, under that provision it's under protective land. protective land no i mean the building He's not going to do the work on the building and lease it to us. Yeah. Do we still want to own it anymore? <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> uh, the other thing too is now we do have two proposals with two suggested uses. Right. Do we uh, get an opinion from the planning board about the site and that use of any kind? I mean, well, we advertise they ultimately the property as is, making no yeah. representation as to its suitability for anything. I have that. I know that, but I'm just saying it's is, up to the buyer to okay. And that's that's we asked him a couple times. Maybe he he would be it would be to his advantage and our advantage to go see the planning board with a couple different plans and see the direction they're they're going in. It would really be worth hearing yeah. what they have to say because they, they, they're basically the, you know, that's a parallel board to our board right. and they make decisions about planning. So if we sell that property to you, we have that authority, but we don't have the authority to say, yeah, five parking spots you have there are okay. Yeah, they may have to approve the, re, the change of use, I think, right? And they might have to do that as well. They have 15 minutes before their start of their meetings that they um, it's like an open open session how often office hours twice a month it's a, on Tuesdays and in, in this room so uh, John could probably tell us what their hours are because he has six, to he's six here 6 30 first and third Tuesday so okay. David what's the sh if we were to reject these bids and put it out there again so they could come back with a new proposal that either doesn't take the ball field into account or maybe after we talk to town council maybe takes the use of the ball field into account but not the sale what's the shortest amount of time we could put this out there for a response probably four weeks four because you've got advertising requirements that's that's what's jamming you up you got to advertise in the central register combines newspaper um, and, and this and this approach would not even have to involve going back to TM. No. Yeah, because let, let, let me do this while we're talking. I'll I'll look up the uh, the posting requirements, the posting timeline for the uh, for property. Because what I'm thinking is, <coughs> if we know this is going to take a while as far as getting a response, we'll, if we were to reject and make a motion to put it out there again tonight, David could be on this tomorrow. 
while he's talking to town council, give you guys a chance to respond um, and get the information from what town council says. That way we already got the ball rolling on this and not waiting for two weeks or next select board meeting to then put it back up to bid because I really want to see it gone one way or another before the end of the year, like we said. So, you know, I'm there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'll let him look up and see what the uh -huh. timeline is. So I'm getting, I'm getting the sense that there, <laughs> that there is no way possible that the land would be a guaranteed part of the parcel. It might, it not for sale probably, unless we can change that. That's why he's going to talk with I mean, town meeting. At, at town meeting vote this past spring, the town meeting members voted no not to sell the piece of property. Not, not they, to they take they it out of Article 97, out of so 97. that we could sell it. Right. Yeah. So, so there may be the ability to use it depending on how we work it out, but not own it. Oh. Right. We could sell it under 97. They just wouldn't be able to use it uh, except for... We couldn't sell it. Uh, Why can't you sell it? Because it's, it's, be. it's that <coughs> Article 97 is town-owned land. Yeah. You're stuck with it. Yeah. Right. And I think everybody's pretty clear they want to keep the town green space. Yeah. All right. So it says the so Central Register has got a publication date of 9 11. So that would be two. The bids would be due two weeks after that. So that puts us at around the uh, end of September, September 26th, something like Not that. Bad. That's our next uh, meeting, the 20, 25th, I believe. So and can I yeah. make a motion that we reject these two bids? And put this back out on September 11th, or publish it on September 11th, uh, for the soonest closing date possible. And in the meantime, we talk to town council and get some information for you on what we can do with the ball fields to see if you're still interested in it. Um, and go forward from there. And I know I'd feel a lot better if you went to the planning board and talked to them about it before. Yeah, with, well, with stuff, your that stuff would all be on me. Your I, proposal, I, yeah. Sense. Yeah. I mean, Just because then that would be like, yeah. hey, they're good with it. Yeah, yeah We're good with it. selling it. You don't want to buy, I hate to say this on TV, but you hate to buy a piece of property you can't do anything with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, we want to be fair to you too, so right. it's easier for you to speak with right. the planning board ahead of time. Right. I don't want you to get stuck with this elephant up there because you know how. You don't know how I feel, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't yeah. need to tell you, as you can tell from all the <laughs> chuckles here. But anyway, um, being I, fair to you, I right, would. But I think uh, I think that there there isn't a, a way that the land can be attached in some kind of a permanent way that I won't be rebidding on the property. Well, I certainly want to have have our town council direct us in that so that it could be used for you also if you could use it as parking for events mm -hmm. is that enough there there is a structure i need to put up in a corner of it and oh uh, okay that carries that's on the property line or over the property line right and i, I know so David, speak. i mean so i'm sorry john seems to feel that the building has right now a very high value that to, to break the building up into usable parts, it's an extreme amount of money, expense, all the new wiring that's in there, it's void. It's all going to come out. It's all going to be separated. New heating system, just think about what the paint job's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Roof. So it's a very large undertaking. And I think to invest that kind of time, money, and energy into that size of a building and to only have maybe 10 parking places in the future, it's not fiscally responsible. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, so, I mean, if, if you're going to go through this whole process, no, I'm not saying that down the road the field would get developed, but it gives people the option to park on the ground. But to invest that kind of time, money, and energy into fixing this building up, and you only have, I mean, you can't even have a large dinner party. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you can't. There's not enough room for people to park. Yeah. So there's, there's not even enough buffer. You couldn't even put a ladder on the roof. Right. The because you're given right. five feet from the edge of the building, and the scope of leaning a ladder, you'd literally be on the town land if you were trying to paint the building or work on the roof. Mm -hmm. Has that line been delineated definitively? Yeah. So it's, yeah it's, it's, it's what, five feet from the it's building? five feet from the building. Yeah, yeah that's not good. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't, there, there actually isn't enough room to drive around the building. 
yeah. on the land owned by the, the person who buys the building. Yeah. So if you d wanted to bring a vehicle to the backyard, you'd be trespassing either on the town's, and if the town puts up a fence five feet up, you can't even fix the roof. Yeah. Moped. Mopeds only. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, yeah. 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 but yeah. Yeah. if you're going to de-lead the building, right. you're setting up staging, you're literally on town land. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. That being said, I, I feel like those, you know, I, I feel still feel like, you know, with the option we're going to take to town meeting is we can sell it to someone like yourself or we can tear it down. And is there anything we can do with taking a certain percentage of that land out of Article 97 to get around these issues? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be possible or not. So uh, that's, that's up to the whole board. And I mean, I appreciate all your feedback and those restrictions, because that's why we wanted to pull the land out of Article 97. So it was more I think that's what we ran into before, because yeah. we were willing to uh, give or put into the uh, RFP the a 50 foot sideline to it so that it would give the building some parking and still yeah, right. be able yeah. to maintain the open space. Um, so that was our original thought when we did our first one and that's why it had to be rejected because of the whatever that 97 Article is, 97. 97. So that's why that did. But we were willing to give that amount of that property so that you would, yeah, it right. would go with that building. Is it possible to take 97 out of part of the park? The property? Well, the, we're going to ask. I mean, we still have to go to town property. meeting. So, yeah. well, I think this is why we need to give David a chance yeah. to. Yeah. So, if we so follow I, suit with his motion, reject them, plan on going back out, everybody can do more due diligence. And then that brings us to putting an article on town meeting warrant for a space holder to, in case we need to go back and it's ask for anyway. and, and give 50 feet of, of that There's, property. Yeah, David, has the thing. I think. Not give it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Build a building. Just a point of information. I submitted the uh, online application to the central register and kicked it back and said I have to have a deadline of October 11th. Yeah. So to, I don't know if that changes changes your thinking. Yeah. No. October 11th is okay. Yeah. 16th. 24th. 24th. Yeah. 16th might be. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to submit it then. So you want to vote on that? Uh, did we we have a motion and a second? Uh, any further discussion on that particular point? If we if you decide to rebid, um, one note of concern I had from other residents was would be how long is the building going to sit in its current state? And I'm not asking for definitive timelines. I know it's dependent on a lot of things, but maybe you could say, you know, within a year or within two years, we plan on having the building looking like it should be. There's something along those lines, because that would help to alleviate a lot of the concerns from yeah, you know, a lot the sooner than the town is. Oh, sure. Great sure. <laughs> <laughs> answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could have as much time as you Won't take us 15 years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll okay. be dead in 15 years. I won't be around to see it. <laughs> All, right. yes, you. Yeah, All those in favor of that particular motion? Aye. 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 And do we want to, I'd like to close the warrant for town meeting. So do we want to put anything Aye. on the town meeting warrant right now? There we go. So we already have a placer for the Did, yeah. North Hadley Hall. Yeah, do I have one of those? I don't know what happened. This one here? Do we have a placeholder for North Avenue Hall in here? We do now. Yeah. We do now. We do now. Yeah. Okay. We so we for the demolition anyway. So we have one on there. Do we want to uh, provide any guidance? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your proposal. Well, let's let him figure out what we need to put on there. But there's a placeholder yeah. there. We have a placeholder there for North Hadley Village Hall, TBD. Right. Uh, in regards to Article 97. In regards to who knows Just what number of place things holder. <laughs> placeholder, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so, we'll so uh, I guess just we need a motion to close the warrant. I'll make a motion to close the warrant. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, we have SWAT the SWOT analysis. Question. My main point of this was. Mm -hmm discussion wise how do we want to handle processing through this mm -hmm. um you know it's used primarily for 
budget discussions, um, looking at department needs. I don't think we have to have this done before special town meeting, but it would be good to, um, you know, get some clarity on this and see what we need for the coming upcoming budget season. Mm -hmm. So do we want to try to handle a couple departments at a time? at a time and chip away at them. Um, it could be good to have done by the all boards meeting, which is October 24th. Is no, that November? That is? November? November 13th? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Chief's, Chief's Bank and Able had uh, called me and said that he, because of being back on vacation and answering uh, all his emails, he will have it submitted to us. Okay. Shortly. Okay. Suzanne notes that you don't have hers in there. No, it's right here. Okay. It wasn't on the list of the ones in the COA okay. right okay, there. Good. Perfect. We got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Delighted. <laughs> Maybe we could um, we could group them to you know do all of town hall public safety. Okay. I think we did that anyway. I think last so. Time. Yeah. So I think did. all we need is highlights because all they're doing is yeah, expanding yeah, yeah. on it. Yeah. And, and some no, people no. did that. They just said, exactly. Just they, they, and I want to highlight what they achieved they, over they, last time. They they bulleted, but let's not make this a long process. Okay, I understand. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no sense in overkilling. No, no, no. It does not have to be okay. a long process. Yeah. All right. Okay. That, that will help us prioritize for the budget season. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. So, SWAT will do it by. Um, public department, safety. town hall, public safety, school. They can come in with public with safety. Public safety. Yeah. School. Um, and then DPW. Town hall other. Yeah. yeah only other. Three meetings. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, What's next? I think town administrator report. All right, there's not a lot that's changed from one week to the next, and we've talked on a number of issues that I had updates for, so I'm uh, just going to blast right through it. Unidirectional flushing, this project has started again. The flushing will commence on September 9th and continue for six to eight weeks, and the results will be used to inform the next capital improvement plan for water infrastructure. Um, just running through here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right, so we handled the borrowing. Yeah, it looks like we've uh, covered everything that I had an update Good. for already. Okay, great. Thank you. Do we have anything unforeseen? I do. <laughs> um, I would like to ask for uh, the select board's authorization to engage in talks uh, with neighboring towns regarding uh, regionalization of uh, water and sewer issues, water, uh, drinking water supplies and uh, wastewater treatment issues. Um, obviously, any agreement or anything like that would have to come back in front of the select board, but uh, just and to engage. might even have to go to town meeting. Yeah, just to engage in some yeah. initial discussions. Which way are we going? Are we doing them or are they doing us? A little bit of both, I think. Will you be involving uh, Chris in these discussions too? Yeah. Uh, we've had some initial talks, and I think we're on the same page, and uh, we're looking at it all options that are out there to save the town money and kind of combine purchasing power. So My one question was on the SWOT analysis was where did the regionalization come from? Who's, who's, who's is that? There's no name on that one. Oh, that was um, the, the submitted by the police. Police and fire. The think, regionalization, because yeah. there was no... Um, For now, yeah, because I, I think I sign asked off on that. old chiefs about that a couple times. Okay. Mm -hmm. in, in old meeting. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm more than happy to have you have those conversations. 
I'll well, I mean, you're looking at water sewer, and the police and fire still have their mutual aid agreements with all these other towns. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's something that can work out in the future. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know? and now Action Ambulance has the contract with UMass for football at the stadium for five years. And I think it's good to look at our options and see what's out there as we're planning ahead and seeing where we want to go with, with our infrastructure here. So mm -hmm. it would be helpful. Uh, do we need to vote on that or just uh, say, mm -hmm. yeah, sounds like a great idea. Let us know what happens. Sure. Go for it then. Okay. Okay. Anything else that's not, we didn't bring up? No, I just oh. need to know what dates you did last time. Because um, there's no minutes. I can... I can give, I can no, pull it up. No, I mean, I'm not, oh. I'm not being critical, Jennifer. I just wasn't here. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to put it in the Bible. <laughs> I can email them all to you tomorrow. It'll be fine. Yeah. I we were thinking that. about just calling you an hour before. <laughs> you could have. We could have FaceTimed. It would have been okay. Yeah, we could have called them. Yeah. And then uh, any announcements? I with my cocktail. I have, I have one announcement. Um, September 18th, 4 p.m. at Esalon, sponsoring a Girl Scout tea party for first and second grade girls to try to get them involved in Girl Scouting. So for, for first and second graders at 4 p.m. on the 18th at Esalon. How about Fireman's Barbecue? Yep. September 20th, Fireman's Barbecue. And tickets are on sale over at the Public Safety Complex. It's at the Young Men's Club, and it mm -hmm. starts at Five Club? Three, somewhere between three. And Late in the afternoon on Friday. <coughs> Tickets are seventeen dollars a piece, or two for thirty. <coughs> what was that? It's a chicken or steak? Chicken. It says chicken steak the week before, and it's not for the farm. Oh, okay. Right. Chicken barbecue. Mm -hmm. Okay. All set. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Right. Oh, you want to do the calendar? Right, raffle calendar. Oh, I don't even know what it is. The fundraiser. Sorry. Support the Hadley Council on Aging calendar raffle, 31 prizes. Tickets are $10, and there is a daily drawing all throughout October. You can get your tickets, I'm sure, at the Council on Aging. In the collector's office. In the collector's office here in Town Hall. Anywhere else? Library. Library. Okay. And I don't download it. Oh, you can download it too. Download. On the website, Council on Aging website? The Friends of the Council. Friends of the Council on Aging nice. website. Nice. I know that Fragile X's benefit is coming you can up also also give me the money. October. in October, so we will announce that again. Um, but it is uh, October 14th um, at Eslon, so um, you can contact Denise Devine for that. And I don't have my. Um, obituaries tonight but I'll have them for the next time okay. all right I think there was a, just a few and now we are going to move into executive session I don't know if anybody can make a motion to go into executive session you queuing up Joyce sir executive content. Do you want me to? Yeah, you Three executive sessions. Okay, so I make a motion that we go into executive session um, for purposes of um, contract negotiation. Enter an executive session for provision of Mass Jungle Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, um, to discuss contract negotiations with the town administrator, to discuss collective bargaining with the DPW, and to discuss contract negotiations with the DPW director. Um, if, um, because of the fact that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining <coughs> position of the public body if the chair so declares. Not to reconvene an open session. Need a second. <laughs> I'll second. I don't know. As chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session, and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. 
and then we just need a roll call vote. Mr. Evans? Yes. Bill? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Chango? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we will. No, we will not. When's the next meeting? Next meeting is on September twenty fifth, I believe. Yes. Six p.m. is that one? An early one. Six p.m. Yep. We are all set.